Marnie, how are you doing? I'm great, Angela. How are you? I'm doing really, really good. I'm thrilled to have you here because I really need some help on something. What is that? You know how we're doing this whole series on, on webinars about governance? Yeah. One of the things that one of the advisors that I was working with in one of the countries in the Caribbean said she had to have a really, really difficult conversation with her board about how to change the governance. Ah, uh, difficult conversations. They're not something any of us no. look forward to. No. Do you think we can put something together that we can figure out and try to help her? Absolutely. There are a few easy tips that we can all use to really make those difficult conversations a success. Why don't we take a look at them? Absolutely. So Angela, is it possible to have a successful, difficult conversation? Yeah, Marnie, I think you can. I really do. I think it's something that's going to take some practice. I think like anything in governance, nothing happens faster the first go round. But I think with some practice and a, and a few really, really concrete tips, we can do it. I think, you know, we have some here that we can share. Awesome. That sounds great. I think, though, before we actually get into them, I want to make sure and remind people that on the right hand side of your screen, you should have um, a window that would allow you to enter some questions either into the chat function or into the question function. And certainly Marnie and I will be monitoring this over the course of the webinar. So if there is anything, please feel free to use that and we'll be sure to get to you. Absolutely. I think when we think about discussions in the context that we're looking at, um, one of the things that makes it so difficult and why some of our national governance advisors have had some challenges is that we're really asking them to be agents of change. Yes. We're asking them to go into their member organizations and in some ways to challenge how those are governed. Change is never something that's easy at any point in time. And so in light of the way we'll, we'll be doing these or this webinar is really about that type of a discussion. It is. You, know, you and I may need to have difficult discussions or we may have to have them with a boss or with a partner. I think there's some things that we can probably learn from this that we can use there. But sure. really, I think we're framing this in the area of how do you have that difficult discussion about we need to change how our governance works. Right. And part of it is that they're bringing new ideas, new ways of work um, into areas that have times been really, really entrenched and people are afraid of what that change means. They're resisting to it. For those of us that have studied physics, it's really if you push one way, there's going to be an equal <laughs> force pushing the other way. And so you have to be prepared for that one. Buy-in at times is really not easy to get, but we've actually had some governance advisors that have had some really good successes with this. That is so true. for me, that's the proof that it really is possible. Yeah. And hearing that, but we've always done it that way. You can change that mentality around <laughs> and successful people have been able to do that. I think one of the other reasons why conversations can be so hard is because you'll often find that people have different opinions, right? But that each person considers theirs to be very valid. And it is. And that's the important part. For the person who's giving their opinion, it is absolutely valid. It's just not the same as everybody else's. <laughs> and so that's when you get an interesting conversation. And exactly. it's balancing that out. I think thirdly, that if it's a conversation that people really, really care about, they're often going to get emotional. And when emotions come into play, that makes it harder too. But we don't necessarily think rationally when we're all emotional. No. And who thinks that governance is going to be really emotional? Everybody. Really? I do. All right, then. I'm emotional about governance. I'm glad to hear that. I'm passionate about governance. That's a different thing. <laughs> but when the conversation turns to who may or may not sit on a board, and it's you a see high that stakes conversation. it is, and you may actually realize that it's your position that may no longer be there, everybody's going to become emotional about it. Sure. And so there's managing that. And as much as you said there's high stakes, I think the other high stakes that are in these discussions is that this is really, really about how your, gut, your organization is going to operate. And the decisions and the results of these discussions will actually or may have a big impact on whether your organization remains successful, becomes successful, or is less so. Yes. And so those stakes of that discussion are high, and so you want to make sure that it's a good one. Exactly. Um, any tips that you might have heard? I know you had had a discussion with, or had been at the, con the Girl Scout conference with Karen Osborne. She'd had some comments about discussion. Was there anything in there that we might be able to, uh, to be able to pass on? I'm sure, you know, the very first one would be a few words that we all know way <laughs> too well. So we have a few tips for success here and I'm going to go through them rather quickly and then we're going to break them down. Okay. Perfect. So be prepared. Oh, we know those words well. Set eh? the scene. We sure do. 
stay focused, actively listen, acknowledge, come to agreement, and set the next steps. Sounds like seven tips we can get through. It sure does. So, of course, be prepared. So you may also want to think about the location of the conversation. Well, I think we all assume, and probably the board members assume, that um, the meeting would take or the conversation would take place where all national council meetings are held. But is there an alternate location that would be more neutral for all participants? Is there a location where there would be less distractions, not other people coming in and out to grab a latte? Um, or that allows the, a place that allows the group to remain fully focused on the discussion. Also think about the ways in which you will be able to have the conversation and make it safe and inclusive for everyone who's in the room. You want to ensure that everyone can have their say. After all, this discussion may change the way your MO works. So really, Marnie, that last point of making it safe and inclusive, we're, we're so fast in wanting to include everybody and get right into the discussion. But what I think I'm hearing too is to say, we want to be sure that we set that scene up really, really well for people and that we don't, we sometimes we want to get into the discussion because we want it to be done and move on to something else, but that we can't do it that way. And so really, we need to be sure, maybe at first instance, to connect with everybody that's in the room. Make sure everybody's really comfortable, maybe ask a question, get the feel of the group. You gave the great example of that at NLDP exercise. There's yeah. probably a few things we can do just to get everybody or, or people feeling more at ease with what's coming than having people being really sitting there on, on pins and needles and, and nervous about this one. Um, you may actually find out through that discussion that somebody has been part of a significant cultural or structural change in an organization that they work with. Ah, they come they, with a bit of experience. Exactly. And even if they relate how that experience goes, hopefully it was positive, <laughs> um, that can help appease some fears that may be there as well. Um, you want to make sure that you contextualize this discussion. Certainly the work that we're doing is uh, not work that's only happening in one member organization. That is true. There's a much bigger picture of WAGs out there about changing how organizations are governed. governed. And there's other organizations out there that are going through this. So they're really not there on its own, on their own. Um, this can be important for them to know. Yeah. And this might actually help you get through the discussion as well and see how they fit in with the bigger picture. You also really need to try to emphasize what the positive is that's going to come out of this. Because sure. they may get hung up on pitfalls that they see and sort of bring some negativity. We've talked in another one of our webinars about always staying positive. Exactly. And that was more a discussion about having people come and join your council. How to recruit the best board ever. Exactly. But this is even the same thing. It's keeping that same positivity. So even though you may stumble as you go through the discussion, really in the end what we're trying to do is try to see how we can make the organization stronger, more vibrant, more relevant, and end up with more members. And I think lastly, one of the things that you want to think about when you're setting the scene is to think about how you want the people to work with one another and set maybe some ground rules for the group. I know when we talk about the NLDP, there's a number of different ways in which we do it to engage yeah. a variety of people. Certainly not you coming with a full list all, all oh, pre-printed and saying everyone has the list to be is. a part of this discussion, yeah. even in setting the ground rules. Yeah. Although one thing I'd watch for is that there may be some ground rules that for this discussion, you want to make sure get on that list. And so you may want to think about that. And certainly one of the things, if the discussion is going to be difficult, that I could think of that I'd want to add into it is to make sure that there's no interrupting of people. Oh, you yes. really want to give the space for people to be able to have their say. And that might take a little bit of time, but really not having any interruptions is going to be very beneficial to the conversation. So Absolutely. think about what you might want to add on that one and how you may want to be able to try to keep people focused on the discussion that we're having. Absolutely. Each time you deliver a specific message, you have to remain focused. You may see some reactions around the room that you want to address. A good way to do this is to add in a comment like, I can imagine a number of you would be concerned to hear what I have just said. Or I know some of you have already talked about this and it did not work. I'd like to suggest that we try again, or, but at this time, let's try X, Y, and Z. Keep asking yourself, 
What do we really want the final outcome to be of this conversation? In our case, the answer should be, or could be, I want to make the governance of my MO better. We should always be looking at our discussions with this as the objective. Depending on how you manage the conversation, if it is just a straightforward discussion or you've made it more interactive using things that you've learned in the NLDP, you'll be likely to get a number of questions from people. And some of these may appear to be accusatory. We're going to be honest about that. And that's hard. That's hard when you get those questions. You are, after all, the messenger of news that people in the room just may not want to hear. So be sure to take a deep breath. Focus on how you will respond so that it is apparent that you want to make the situation better and then answer or deal with the difficult question. Stay calm. Don't become defensive. And we know this can be hard. Remember that everyone around the room is there because they want to make things better. Some people just want to show it in a different way. Maybe one of the things we could do, Angela, is is really actively listen. Wow, actively wow. listening. I think that's a great, great concept. And I think one of the things where that becomes a challenge for us in the actively listening is one of the things to do is to really listen for silence. Ooh. <laughs> That sounds kind of uncomfortable. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, too. Yes. So, Marnie, you've traveled a fair bit, so have I. Yeah. I know that we've often ended up certainly meeting people, but also in cultures where silence is something that's really good. Yeah. And you and I both come from a culture where that's less so. Exactly. If there's, if there's a blank space in a conversation, we want to fill it. Yes. And so you may find that if you're working with people from a different culture. You may have people that have come and joined your, your council that – come from a different background and where that's the way it is. It may also be just individual people. But really, silence allows people to think about what you've just said and to come up with the questions or the comments that in the end are the ones that you want to hear. And if you fill that silence with more talk, <laughs> they're never going to be able to ask those questions because they won't feel comfortable with that one. So really, don't be afraid for the silence. The moment right after you've provided a strong message is likely the moment where that silence will be appreciated the most because that's the moment that's the most difficult. I think another part of listening actively is doing more than just listening. And it's really understanding what the person is saying. So you actually have to sit there and, and focus on it. It's more than not talking. It's about being present, being curious, and really looking to understand what the other person is saying. And with that, it means all of the nuances, the issues that they're bringing up. It may even be that what they're not saying. <laughs> and then looking how to address each one of those. And as I sort of said in one of those possible ground rules, that, that not interrupting the speaker, that becomes important as you go through it and try to really do more than the listen. We also hope, though, that you're not the only one that's doing this. Maybe that's part of your discussion at the front end, but that others will also have comments to add to what's being said. As a facilitator, you're the one who will have to manage all of this and make sure that people add specific comments at the appropriate and the right time so that it ends up bringing all of the questions about one topic before you move to the next topic. Otherwise, it's just going to end up confusing some people. And exactly. so that, that's more of a role for you as that facilitator. And it's really being able then to ensure that you've got the right people or that you've got the people making the comments at the right time. And it's important that we actually let them know that. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the hardest things to do, as we kind of said earlier, is to not react strongly to what someone says. Remember that each person is telling you what's important to them and what they feel. The topic of discussion may or may not be important to you or may or may not be what you feel, but it is no less valid. Can you imagine a discussion where you responded with, well, that's absurd. Oof, that would be a tough one. It's not likely to get you very far. I don't think so. A better answer would be, I'm not sure I see it that way. Can you explain to me um, and help me understand 
what you mean or, or why you see it that way? You should take the opportunity to seek clarification that is needed. That is clarification for you and for the others in the room. After all, you've been actively listening with the intent to make things better. Recognize that people will also use the discussion opportunity to voice concerns. It will be really important for you to acknowledge calmly what they have said. A good way to do this is to restate what you've just heard in your own words. I'm sure you've heard people start a sentence with, if I understood correctly, or if I would put that into different words, you're saying that this ensures that you have in fact not only heard, but have also understood what is being said. You may also want to check and see if there are others in the room or in the group that have a different understanding on the comment. You want to be sure that everyone understands the same thing. No lie, this is going to be time consuming, especially if there are numerous people in the room with opposing views. But this is a crucial step in making positive change. So don't try to tack one of these discussions and conversations to the end of an agenda. Be sure to work with the person who sets the agenda to be sure that there's ample time to have a good discussion about one of these topics. Marnie, you just said um, a, a minute ago that you want to make sure that everybody understands the same thing yeah. as you're going through. And I think that's a crucial point as you go through this, is in the end, people need to understand it, but they also all need to commonly agree with how you're going that forward. That is so true. And really getting to come to an agreement, that's really part of the tricky part. It is. And it's really, as a facilitator, it's taking all of that listening all of the questioning and all of the understanding that you've gone through to come up with a proposal that's going to work for people. You may have to work with the group to find a few proposals before you're going to find one that's going to work with everybody. You actually may have to go through this entire process a number of times if you're trying to bring out a number of changes. That is so true. exactly as you said, it's going to take, it's going to take some time. Um, you may actually want to schedule two discussions. Yeah rather than trying to tack it all into one. It's it's tiring intellectually too. And so you don't want to have people that are really intellectually tired as they're going through this. What we recommend is that if you are going to split it into two, finish one discussion before you start the next. Yes. Don't break it up in that way. Um, but what we've often found is that you may want to have numerous discussions that are purely set as discussions and as an exploratory option, and then have the decision-making be a completely different yeah. moment in time. And so that gives people time to sit, to reflect, to have the discussion without the pressure of knowing they have to make a decision at the same point in time. And that way, everybody invests in the discussion and there's no rush for the decision making. The one thing that you want to make sure of though as you're having that discussion is that it still absolutely meets what you've agreed upon as being what brought you together in the first place. So will what you are proposing make the governance of your member organization better. If it does, fantastic, go with it. If not, you might really need to think the proposal that you've put on the table. Yeah. But and what do we do once we have that proposal and it's fabulous and we've reached a great consensus and everyone's on the same page and we don't want to lose our momentum? I don't think it ends there, does it? No, I, I think... We stop for a minute and figure out what needs to be done to make that decision a reality, to put the list together of, of while well, everyone's in the room of what we need to do next, our action items, let's say, and check with the group to see that nothing has been forgotten and then assign each person to each action item. Oh, we so often forget that one, right? We light up the, the action items and then we say, that's great. And then usually as a facilitator, you end up with all the actions you do and if you have a group that's interested and engaged use them to move this conversation forward one of the most important thing however is to add a specific timeline to each item a timeline ensures that the project moves forward sooner rather than later you will want to make sure that some of the action items you identified are done in a relatively short time span 
so you may want to break down some of the larger action items into smaller ones. And you know what? Completing the actions is something positive, and we all love to celebrate positive things. Oh, I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, you may just have made a decision that will have an impact on a specific group of people or on your whole MO. We recommend that you share the outcomes of the discussions and the decisions that were made when appropriate. This creates transparency in the work that you do and in the conversations that you have. And this will avoid, hopefully, a difficult conversation in the future. That's great. I, if we can get rid of a few of those difficult conversations, that's so much the better. And move our MOs forward. <sighs> Absolutely. So if we bring this together and summarize it a bit, I think what we've gone through today is to really think about the conversation that you're going to have. Plan it out, be prepared, and be prepared for a number of reactions that could happen from within the group. Make sure that you listen well to what everybody is saying. Make sure that you fully understand what it means, and don't be afraid to ask for clarifications or restate what you've heard in your own words or in the words or ask somebody else so that it gets said in their words, that, that you're all on the same page. Don't resist a different opinion. Look at it more as a different way to learn and to help you get to your ultimate objective of having better governance in your member organization. And when you're done, absolutely set up that list of next steps, put the timelines in place with it, and then don't forget to celebrate. You've done a fantastic <laughs> job with it. Outstanding. Marnie, as we've gone through, have any questions come in in our chat? Actually, we did get a really great question from Kelly. Um, she asked, how do I handle someone who keeps bringing up the same topic over and over and over and refuses to move on? Sometimes this topic isn't really what we're discussing. It's a great question, Kelly. Thanks so much for adding this one in. Um, one of the tips that we use at work is we do something that's called on the table, off the table. And it's part of what we do in our planning phase. And it really is a way of defining what's going to be in the sandbox for what you're going to discuss. And then it's something that you can actually bring to the discussion at the front end to say, this is what we will, and more importantly, not be discussing today either because it's outside of the realm of what you can actually make a decision on, it's something that has to go to a different part of an organization um, or a different part of your organization, but it's letting people know ahead of time that that's off the table. It doesn't mean it can't be discussed at some other point in time in some other in forum, but for that discussion, that's not what it is. And on the flip side of that, we've often said, what's on the table? And so it kind of frames the what can I discuss and what can I not? And certainly you don't capture everything. But if you can come with it, here's what's on the table and here's what I want to discuss. That helps focus people as well. So hopefully that's something that can, can give you a hand. Don't forget too, we've often heard suggestions about using the parking lot. Yeah. So if it is something that keeps coming up, that may be another way of, of looking at it, of having that parking lot on the side, the sheet of paper, where you write down something that you know you will then come back to. And that once this as part of a different conversation, but it lets people know that you're acknowledging that element and that you're not simply letting it die. Great, Kelly. Thank you so much for that one. Absolutely. Any other questions? No, well, I don't, see any. I don't see any other questions in the chat for now, but um, I do want to recommend a resource. Uh, much of our conversation uh, today came from a book called Crucial Conversations. We do know that this book is available in Spanish and French and English, and we would recommend that you pick this up and use it as a great resource. And if you have any questions, please absolutely send them our way. Our uh, email addresses are below, and we thank you so much for taking your time to join us today. Thank you.